The elderberries are ripe and it's time to make one of my favorite jellies. Um, I don't know if you saw about the drought, the movie I made about the uh, drought last year, but um, for some reason, most of the elderberry bushes did come back. Uh, very few elderberries on them this year, but at least they're still alive and, you know, they're fighting back. So it looks like hopefully next year I'll, you know, have a little bit better batch. Um, there's only one there that, uh, that one basically has got to come out. That one's just about dead, but the other nine nine of them you know basically made it and um did recover some so i got some elderberries for uh, my favorite jelly and my hops i didn't bother to put the ropes up this year because i thought they had all died from the drought but it turned out that one of the three plants actually survived and um i'm gonna have to get a ladder out to get those hops down now it looks like because i you know i didn't put, take the time to put the ropes up but i'll have a couple hops this year so anyhow, um, starting by just picking some of the ripe elderberries that I can find. Um, I don't have enough here to make a batch of wine this year, but you know, at least I do have enough for some jelly. And they, you know, some of them are starting to get ripe, and they're all in different stages. So I'm trying to pick the the ripest ones now to get going. Now I'm going to put a um, link to the recipe in the description here i can't really print it because it's an old sure gel recipe but i'm not you know positive about the copyright on it so um i'll put a link to it um and there's the elderberries i pick like almost a five gallon bucket full and now it's time to first thing i gotta do is wash them all and this is really just a time consuming thing because you know basically i i soak them and then Make sure that you wear rubber gloves if you uh, deal with these things because they can stain your skin really bad. Huh? You'll be bright purple when you're done. It does not come off easily. So, you know, basically it's a matter of removing the berries from the stem. And that bucket there took me uh, probably about an hour, hour and 15 minutes just to get the berries separated. It is a time-consuming process to, you know, pick out the berries and make sure you get the bugs out and stuff. So there they are, you got the stems and the berries and um for this recipe it says that you need uh you know need you need like three pounds of berries for a batch. And I'm making two batches, so I'm just kinda weighing them out to make sure that I have enough. And um it's getting a little later in the day, so now I'm gonna just put them in a plastic bag for and put them in, down in my beer fridge for um so I can start the jelly tomorrow morning. So basically I, you know, I did wind up getting my, uh, my six pounds of elderberries plus I did get a couple extra pounds. So I got about seven and a half pounds all together. So I have plenty to make two batches. Um, and when you make jelly, you never want to double up on a batch at once. You have to make them individual. Uh, otherwise you can have problems where it won't set up or, the, you know, just major problems with it. So I always break them down and you know do individual batches so so there's my berries and here we are the next morning I'm just uh you know I put them in my beer fridge overnight to keep them fresh and cool and then I'm just going to dump them in a big pot and um you know once you get them in there I've got the fire under it low just starting to warm it up and heat it up and just start crushing them as I go um so you notice that, you know, when they're cold, they're kind of hard to crush. But as the pot starts getting hotter, they, they crush easier and you'll start to see, you know, a little more juice coming to the top and stuff. And before you know it, you'll, you know, the pot will have a bunch of juice in it. And in the meantime, while that's starting to heat up, I got the jars out. And, you know, it says it makes five jars, um, but I... Uh, I usually get six out of it, so I've got a dozen jars out for the two batches. And, you know, you just have to make sure that you get them all really washed good and um, ready to go. So that, you know, just takes a couple minutes while the berries are starting to cook. And then the lids, these new style lids, you have to um, also wash them in hot soapy water. Uh, you no longer bring them up, you know, put them in a pot of water and heat them up. So you just use them... Uh, after washing them like that and here we are the berry berries are starting to simmer now and you know you have to simmer them for a while until they all break down and uh, the juice comes out 
So in the meantime, I got this, got to make a jelly bag. Um, and what I do is I just take this big stainless steel strainer and some uh, cheesecloth. And what I'll do is I'll put like three layers of it. I'll fold it over a couple times and just put three layers of it in the strainer to start out with. Um, and I'll stick the whole thing in a big pot because uh, I don't want to make a mess. Um, my wife will kick me out of the kitchen if I spill this stuff. So, And make sure you have old clothes on when you're working with this stuff because uh, anything that touches you will cause a stain. So there it is. I'm just kind of you know, pouring the juice through the colander, berries and all, and it's all really winding up in the cheesecloth there. So there's a little bit more than the colander could hold in the beginning, and just uh, played with the cheesecloth, and then I just took and pushed it down a little bit to get some of the juice out of it. And then I just went back and took the, the rest of the uh, berries that were in the pot, and got them in the cheesecloth then once you get them in the pot you just um, you know kind of fold it up like a little one of those hobo bags and um, wrap a I use some cotton butcher cloth or butcher's twine and wrap that around a couple times and make sure you get a real good tight knot so that um, when you hang it nothing will fall out you don't have a giant mess um, so there it is just you know tie a good tight knot on it and I have a cabinet door that has hinges that are strong enough to hold the bag so what I usually do is I just hang it from the, the doorknob there over the pot to drip um, not all hinges and cabinet doors are strong enough so you have to be careful and you know make sure that you hang it from something that's good and I just let it drip for about a half an hour and while that's you know going I get the um, the jar started to heat up and I just use one of those old blue enamel pots to for these jars because I don't need the big uh, canner and after half an hour go back and just squeeze a little bit le more out of the juice and um, there it is I got my uh, my juice and you need sheer gel so you need um, one box of pectin for each uh, batch and then I need lemon juice, so um, my wife usually does this, but she told she's sitting there watching me and telling me how to do it. She said, you got to roll the lemons first. She said, you get more juice out of them if you roll them. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, I don't know if it really does anything or not, but um, there's no real way to tell. And then uh, she tells me to put the lemon in the lemon press like that. And I look at it, I'm like, gee, how come there's holes in the bottom and there's no lemon coming out of it? And I'm like, you're doing this all wrong, I think. So I um, I did the, the first lemon, like she told me to, just to please her. And then um, I went back with the, the next lemon and I decided to just kind of flip it around so that it would work the way it should work. And the lemon would come out the bottom instead of squirting all over you. And turned out that um, she'd been doing it wrong all these years so uh, now we both know the easiest way to get the lemon juice out so I um, you know I squeezed the lemons and you can see I got a lot more juice out of them and then I just threw the two halves in and went for a final squeeze and even got more juice out of them so I um, I squeezed all the lemon juice I needed for the both of the batches and um, I'll just divide it up as I do the individual batches and then some of the little seeds did go through the holes in the that lemon press so had to go back and just put a put it through a little strainer and get all the the pits out and then you just start in the pot um, put in the elderberry juice that we just made and then I'm gonna add the amount of lemon juice that is required for the recipe and then the next thing you do is you get that mixed up and started to heat up and uh, you open the box of pectin and put the whole bag of pectin in um, now I just kind of dumped it in fast and uh, I should have gone a little bit slower I usually do but I wasn't paying attention so it took me a while to go back and stir it all in and get it all mixed up good but it's easier if you just put a little bit in at a time and stir it and a little more and stir it and um, 
you know, just keep on stirring it. And now you have to turn the, uh, the fire up on high and get that to a rolling boil. And then in the meantime, I'm getting the sugar ready here for the recipe. Uh, it does take a lot of sugar and, um, you know, the elderberries are really bitter. So I guess that's why. And once you get that up to a rolling boil, the juice, you just go back and start to slowly stir in the sugar. Um, this you have to, you know, do a little bit at a time and get it to all dissolve and, you know, just keep stirring it. And, you know, from this point on, it's basically you really have to just about constantly keep stirring this stuff anyway to, um, to keep it from uh, burning in the bottom or anything. So... Now I got all the sugar stirred in and I actually had to move it back to the hotter burner and turn it up on high and have to bring this uh, this to a rolling boil. And I'm just about at the rolling boil point so I got to get the jars ready too because you want to try to be quick when you, you know, you get it boiled. To, from the time you get it boiled until the time you get it in the jar so. Um... So here I am just, you know, trying to get the jars out, trying to keep stirring it. So now at this point, you're really dealing with a lot of steam and a lot of hot liquids here. So you have to be, you know, really careful that you don't get burned because um, it would be real easy to get burned. So um got the jars out and I got the um, jelly up to a rolling boil. And you have to boil it for a minute like that and keep stirring it. And usually it'll foam up on you um for some reason i didn't get a lot of foam on it so i was real happy about that um some people put butter on it so it doesn't foam but i i never do that i usually just let it foam up and scrape it off but for some reason this time i did not get the foam so i'm just gonna you know keep stirring it for the minute and then shut it off shut the fire off and take it off the burner and you have to immediately start filling the jars up um, it is a very, very hot liquid that will burn you really bad, so you have to be careful. Um, and this is not, you know, like other, like pickling and stuff where you uh, leave a head space. Basically, you, um, have to fill the jars up to about, they say an eighth inch from the top. Um, I usually try to get it between a quarter and an eighth of an inch from the top. So they're, they're pretty much, you know, filled right to the top. And the recipe says that it makes five um, jars. And for some reason, I don't know, I always follow the recipe. And some for some reason, I wind up getting six jars out of it. So, you know, I always prepare an extra one. And there you can see it's like right right to the last liquid drop. I got six, six jars out of it just, you know, perfectly. Um, so... You know, basically they're, you know, they're all pretty much full now and they're they're red hot. So you really have to be careful at this point in time. And um, so then I just take a damp paper towel and wipe off the rims just to make sure that there's, um, you know, no sugar or jelly or anything that might have dripped on them. And then you just, uh, you know, put the caps, the lids on there. And these are those new style lids so you don't heat them. You just wash them like I showed you before. Um, I don't know how long you're going to last. They say 18 months. But I've stored jelly with the older style lids for like 5 years and had no problem. So I'm hoping that they last longer. So basically you know, you get the lids on and then get the rings on there and get them started. And then I have one of the little ball jar gripping hot mitts like that I use to do the final um, snugging up of the lids before I you know put them back into the water bath so there it is the water is pretty much up to a boil and now it's just um, time to put them back in and process them now the um, the process time for jelly is really a um, you know it's a really quick time um, and I did was able to scrape just a little bit. That's all I had left over in that batch. So um, that was a really close batch. And then it's time to start cleaning everything up again. Just to start get the second batch going. Because I'm 
making two batches and you know starting all over with the juice and the lemon juice and the sugar and everything else this time I put a little bit of extra juice in and a little extra sugar in just so that I um, could get some to taste and there it is you get the other ones up to a boil and start the timer it's only a five minute processing time on these so you you know boil them for five minutes uh, and then I shut it off shut the fire off and let it cool for a couple of minutes and you know then take the jars out and put them on some wood racks to uh, to allow them to cool it's amazing how fast the jars pop with the jelly in them um, you hear that lid pop just about by the time they get over to the wooden rack for some reason so basically there's the first six jars done um, now it's time to start all over with the next six and um, you know I've got the the juice starting to heat up now and coming to a boil and starting the next jars to get them heated up and sterilized and you know then I get the same thing over again you bring that up to the rolling boil and um, let that boil for one minute once you get there and then it's time to you know start all over filling the jars again um, and like I said before I've uh, from what I understand you're never supposed to try to double up on batch of the jelly so I don't um, it just takes too long and it's too tough to make to you know take any chances so I always follow the instructions carefully so there it is um, you know the next batch is getting ready to be processed and um, in the end I wound up with uh, 12 jars and like I said I put a little extra juice in to get a little bit extra to try and so that was you know actually it's about seven hours worth of work to get to that point so um, it's not easy to make a lot of jelly but basically the next day I just uh, you know took the jars and took the lids off washed them all up and got everything all labeled and um, you know all ready to go down in the root cellar now basically so um, I did put the rings back on these so just because I'm worried about these new lids so I don't know if that'll help or not and you know there's my test jar and you can see how good it's set up so um, you know it did come out good it did set up good and it's just got an amazing flavor that you'll never find in the store thanks for watching please subscribe